Particle Illusion for After Effects. I want to talk very briefly about the installer. Uh, once the install finishes, this is the final screen you'll see. You've got two options that I want to go over. The first one is download the installer for the additional emitter libraries. Uh, the installer for Particle Illusion for After Effects only installs a single library. Uh, there are dozens of other ones, of other ones available. So um, if you already have Particle Illusion 3 installed on your computer, then you probably have the, the, all the emitter libraries and you don't need to have um, them installed again. So you want to uncheck this option. Um, if you do not have Particle Illusion 3 installed, uh, or you know you don't have the emit extra emitter libraries, then you want to make sure that that's checked. And what will happen is your browser will open, it will uh, download the um, installer, you want to save that to your drive, and then run that, and it will install all the emitter libraries uh, for you. In After Effects, I have some footage loaded, and I want to apply Particle Illusion to it. So uh, go to Effects, Wonder Touch, Particle Illusion. And in Particle Illusion, there's no such thing as a blank or empty emitter, so you've always got to start with a preset. And so this uh, is the Emitter Selection dialog that shows up. If you're not familiar with Particle Illusion 3, on the left here you'll see the Library window. It shows all the emitters that are in the currently loaded library. The one that shows initially is the default library. It's got a sampler of, it's sort of a sampler library that shows a, a lot of different types of effects you, you, that are available. Um, if you want to load a different library, uh, click the Load Library button and then select the library that you want uh, manually. An easier way, though, is to go ahead and do a search. So we'll use our search functions over here. And let's say I wanted to search for smoke emitters. I click Search. And since this is the first time I'm searching, um, it's doing an um, index build. It's kind of indexing all the emitters that are on, the, uh, on my system and uh, making them searchable. I uh, should point out that the emitter search is done by emitter name only. There's no key data um, in, the, in the emitters other than the name. So when I type smoke, I'm going to get all the emitters that have smoke in their title. So once the search uh, index data is built, and that doesn't happen every time. That only happens the first time or when you actually click the build index button to rebuild your search data. And now I, it shows me my results of my search, which is um, about 300 uh, plus emitters that have smoke in the title. And I'm looking for something that's kind of uh, wispy and thin. Um, so here's a thin smoke disperse. I'm going to go ahead and use that. Um, incidentally, if I wanted to go ahead and find, uh, return every emitter that's on my system, I can do an empty search. Uh, remove everything from the keywords, uh, include no spaces, nothing, and do an OR search, and it would return every emitter on my system. Uh, I'm just going to use this one right now. And there I've got my thin uh, smoke in my project. So let's take a look at some of the parameters now. So if we spin open this emitter, we can see that it's a fairly simple emitter and it's got only one particle type, um, one component to it. Uh, it's still got about uh, 20 or so parameters and depending on the emitter that you've added, uh, it could be more complex and you could have hundreds of parameters. Uh, but don't panic because they're all pretty much the same. So if you take a look here, you can see that we've got life, number, size, velocity, etc. at the top level, which are shown as percentages, and then you've got at the lower level, you've got life, number, size, velocity, etc., which are shown as um, just straight numbers, no, no percentages. Uh, at the top level, which is the emitter level, uh, those are considered scaling factors that apply to all the values below it. So if this emitter was made up of multiple particle types, um, then changing the size, for instance, at the top level would change the size value for all the particle types. Uh, by changing it at the lower level here would change it only for the selected particle type. So in this case, since it's only a single uh, particle type in this effect, uh, changing size um, at either level does, has the same effect. It makes the particles bigger. So. Um, if we go ahead and we can uh, adjust the visibility, uh, we can see the visibility is at 100%, but if we look lower down, the visibility at the particle type level is only 21%. So uh, the 100% scaling factor above is applied to the lower 21%. Um, one thing to point out about the uh, particle type level is that these uh, basic parameters, life, number, size, have a variation um, parameters as well. So if you wanted uh, particles to be different sizes, you would set size variation to a higher value. If you want them all to be exactly the same size, uh, then you want to use uh, set that to zero. So uh, let's look at a little more advanced emitter, um, something we call a super emitter uh, that has uh, an additional level of complexity here. So I've removed that. I'm going to add uh, particle illusion again just so we can select a different emitter. Uh, I'm going to load the default library back up again and uh, take a look at that. Further down in the library, we've got some nice uh, super emitter examples. Here's a, a pretty simple one that will show us what's going on with super emitters. So 
here is the super emitter. Uh, a super emitter, a definition of a super emitter is an emitter that creates other emitters which then create particles, as opposed to a regular emitter which is an emitter that creates particles directly. So in this case, if we spin it open, um, it's a relatively simple super emitter, but you can see that there's three levels of parameters now. The top level, uh, a mid-level here, and then the bottom level, which is what we saw in the previous example. So at this, at this point, um, changing the, the lowest level parameter will uh, still affect the particles. So uh, changing the velocity uh, to zero, for instance, makes the particles not move after they're born. So you can see now that they're being created and just staying where they were. Um, if we look now at the intermediate uh, level here, this is the free emitter level. So uh, a super emitter creates free emitters, which act a little bit like particles, but they're not visible. And then those free emitters create particles. So uh, the F in front of these parameters uh, indicates that those are going to adjust, uh, affect the free emitters themselves. So if we change F velocity, it's not going to change the way the particles themselves move. It doesn't make the particles move faster or slower. It changes the speed at which the free emitters themselves move. So you can see as I adjust that down, the free emitters, which are the kind of the, the invisible objects that are creating all these uh, lines of particles, are moving less and, and um, should be pretty obvious what's going on there. So even though uh, super emitters are more complex, you look at them and you still get a pretty intuitive grasp of what's going on. Um, we still got the velocity, size, um, and all those types of things, but you also have the uh, F versions of them which which apply to the to the free emitters and probably playing around with with some of these emitters a little bit will will get you a little more familiar with how that how that works um, again if you load a really complex emitter you can have two levels of of free emitters here and then uh, each one of those can have I believe three or four levels of, of particle types and so you can get quite a large number of parameters in here so like I said you know in the hundreds um, but if you look at them closely they're all um, duplicates of the same type of, of parameters. So uh, might be a little daunting when you, when you see some of those more complex emitters, but um, pretty manageable once, once you look at it closely. So I've chosen a preset emitter, and I want to adjust it a little bit because it's not quite exactly what I want. It's a great starting point, which is that's the whole point of the presets of the, for the emitter libraries, but it's not exactly what I want. So what I want to do is um, go ahead and get rid of the sparks. I'm not really liking the way the sparks are working here. So if we take the sparks, um, maybe you might think that taking the visibility down to zero would be the, the best solution, but uh, yeah, it makes them go away, but really they're still there. Uh, the best thing to do is take the number down to zero so it doesn't create any sparks at all. So that looks a little better, and maybe I want to go ahead and maybe that intense center is uh, too strong for me. I can adjust the size of those particles. Uh, make it look a little different. Uh, it's not quite right. So I'm um, still not real happy with this. It looks kind of uh, intense here and, and there's a little bit of smoke fringing going on. So uh, what do we want to do? I, I need to get this to blend a little bit better. So I'm going to take the um, effect and move it to a uh, an adjustment layer. So I'll create a new adjustment layer and then we will take particle illusion off of our footage layer and we will paste it onto our adjustment layer and then I'll change the adjustment layer I don't know I'll make it a screen I think is probably a good choice and uh, brightens things up a bit but it also makes those particles uh, blend a little bit better um, I think I actually might want to go ahead and, and make the uh, center a little bit bigger again let's make it a little more impressive so um, the other thing I, that I, I noticed is that I want that emitter to be going at the beginning. At the beginning of my footage, I don't have it going. The particles are just getting started. So um, the, having the uh, emitter by itself on a separate layer, I can go ahead and slide that layer to the left in time to get it, uh, the emitter going. You can see that the emitter is now um, doing some, uh, creating some particles uh, right away. And that's more uh, along the lines of what I'm looking for for this uh, effect. That's also the way I, I would go ahead and add uh, additional emitters as well. I uh, probably would create a, a new layer and add a separate instance of, of particle illusion and add another, add another emitter if I needed it. Um, that gives me a little more flexibility. Uh, but putting them in different layers allows me to go ahead and move those around and, and combine them in different ways. That, that's a little more um, flexible. So uh, that's a quick look at particle illusion for After Effects. Uh, thanks for watching.